Hello world, how's it going? So this time I don't want to do a book review, although there's a lot of books I do want to review, like this one, which I haven't read yet, but I hope I'll read and review and give my opinions on. Maybe this one, which I probably won't read anytime soon because I don't like hardcovers, but I've heard very good things about this one. Or maybe this one, Middle March, which I'm reading right now, but like it's going to take me a long time to finish. But I'm probably going to review this soon because I've read it recently and I want to give my impressions before I forget or I think about the book. But this time, I want to talk about protests happening uh, all around Lebanon. So I don't want to do a review with like the first five, ten minutes of it uh, talking about something not directly related to review. And this time, I want to talk about something not related at all to literature or books. I want to talk about the protests that are happening right now. And I don't know who... I don't know who's watching. I don't know what's my key demographic. I know there's only like a few dozens of people watching my videos. But uh, I, uh, if you haven't watched one of my videos, I'm from Lebanon. Just to point out, I do live in Lebanon. Lived here my whole life, even though I wasn't born here. I have an American accent, so that might confuse people. But I'm Lebanese. I do have an American passport because I was born there. Yes, I'm an anchor baby. Fuck you, conservatives. Um, but I just want to talk about the situation now because I, I just have a lot on my mind. I There's part of me that doesn't give a shit because I've seen a lot of protests about um, different, you know, I've seen a lot of protests in Lebanon that went nowhere in terms of long-term uh, structural changes but had short-term changes. And I'm so socially, politically, and culturally alienated from this country that I feel as if I have no stake um, in any of these uh, you know, protests or uh, social political movements because of because of the sense of detachment I have. Probably because my Arabic is shit. I can speak Arabic. So... I've always found myself alienated and almost like self-imposed. I've also like forced myself to be, to be, to not give a shit. It's not that I, I've, I've been alienated by Lebanon, but I have partly played a part in distancing myself away from the Lebanese life and culture. But uh, whatever is the case, I've, I, I've lived in this country my whole life. And a lot of the horrible things, like a lot, all the negative things about this country not only affect Lebanese people, but also affect people like me uh, and other people who don't feel like they belong here. And this time I do want to give my thoughts because I mean, it's the first time I've had like a public platform that's not social media. I deleted my Facebook last summer and I think this is probably the best platform to articulate thoughts on the matter. So what happened was the Lebanese government the go Lebanese government wanted to propose and, and, and execute a tax on WhatsApp uh, that would amount to 0 0.2 dollars a day if you use WhatsApp calls every day or any other uh, uh, third app, uh, app third app uh, voice caller device. If you, use, if you use anything like WhatsApp, like Telegram or whatever. And that would amount to $6 a month if you use WhatsApp every day to call. And that really pissed off a lot of Lebanese people. And sent them marching to downtown to uh, these governmental buildings in Riyadh al Salah, And it started last Thursday night. And it's been going on till now. It... It's, it's, it's really intense because this is, I mean, it's, it's not the first protest, like I said, but this is the largest scale protest I've seen. And I think this country has seen, I think, I think I'm not really sure about the numbers, but maybe since 2005 after former Prime Minister Rafi Hariri got assassinated. But this is different in that the protesters are not politically divided like they usually are. Um, four years ago, there was a protest about the garbage crisis 2015. And uh, it was not politically motivated because the protests are about 
you know, the health hazards that are coming from like this garbage crisis. That's like there's a garbage like everywhere. The cancer rates were soaring, so people of all sects were being affected. But it ended up becoming not sectarian, but like one politician brought his goons to beat up uh, the protesters and turn into sectarian things so they could divert the attention away from uh, you know the politicians. This time, a lot of the protesters, even though the movement is not that organized, that there's no leadership, it's very decentralized, a lot of the protesters are trying to emphasize as best as they can not to turn this into a political thing, not to not to uh, hold back on any politician, and that if any politician is trying to move on the bandwagon, to tell them to you know fuck off because they are responsible for everything wrong in this country. So after this proposed WhatsApp tax that the government wanted to implement, everybody lost their shit, went to the streets, and just... No, they didn't tear shit up that much, actually. It was, it was very peaceful. And then, they, of course, like they burned tires and they littered everywhere, but like people were actually more respectful and um, cooperative. Um, I, I think this is one of the better protests I've seen, although I haven't seen much in my life, but... Yeah, people have had enough. Um, you know, like this is a country that, that that has a very low, like people make very little here. Like you make, you live on a thousand dollars a month in a country that has high cost of living for like low living standards, and you keep taxing the poor to, to the point where they they just they're just living hand like like they're living like paycheck to paycheck, like not minimum wage but like barely above minimum wage jobs after having a college education. Like you can't. At a certain point, like people aren't afraid of risking their um, health, security, and safety to march down the government's, uh, you know, the governmental buildings and ask, "Hey, you guys are not only you know ruining our lives, but you're gonna take ruin the future of our kids. Could you please stop being greedy fucks and just be sensible?" And not just that, they actually want uh, the government to step down. And I agree with everything that a lot of the protesters are angry about. I have been angry about this country as far as I can remember. Particularly like in college when like I wanted to be a politically active college student that wanted to I was I was heavily involved in, in, in like the journalism. I want I covered political protests on campus when um you know Israel bombed uh, uh Gaza in 2012 and um, major in political science because I wanted to learn about the history and politics of Lebanon and the region, why it's so messed up and unstable. And uh, um, I, despite not being a people person, I'm more interested in ideas and things and people. I really, I really have an interest in, in, in like, you know, knowing, uh, why this part of the world is fucked up, and 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 it's and it's driven me to the point where I just stopped giving a shit after struggling for several years of working hard and not getting any results um, because I I I went to a very good university. I'm doing my master's there right now. And I struggled there with mental health problems. I don't want to go too deep into that, too deep into that, because I don't want to talk about myself too much. Although that's what I'm doing. And I, I was not someone at, looking for money. But after graduating, all I could get was an internship. To an on-paying internship, so I could get experience. And I just tried to look for jobs, but there were no paying jobs that you know, uh, for, for people with just a bachelor's in political science, and that's understandable, but it is just, economically, it's just difficult to make a living and, 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 and like, make it on your own here. The, the, the mindset the parents instill in their kids here is to get a degree in engineering, business, and medicine, and just go abroad. And it's sad. Uh, my parents want me to leave this country. They want a better life for me. And I, I for a long time, I want to stay here and build a life for myself here, but because of the detachment and alienation I have towards the culture and way of life here, I just don't give a shit. I just want to leave. But 
yeah, I get pissed, uh, like every other Lebanese person does when, when, when they're having a rough time, but also when there are opportunities for, you know, good quality of life for themselves and, you know, you know their friends and family and their kids is limited. You get pissed and you want to take it out on something. And there's not a lot of, like, you know, legal recourse here unless you are, you know, rich and powerful already. So I hope the protests do more than just act as an outlet to, to, to vent this anger. I hope it's not just about canceling this WhatsApp tax, which, which is scrapped right now. I hope it's more than just scaring the politicians temporarily so they could like offer this reform package, which they have. And, and yeah, even though the protesters don't trust the politicians that are not happy with the prime minister uh, and the rest of the you know, parliament is offering, I don't know where this is going. And um, I'm, I'm scared for the country and for the people because suppose they all resign. I mean, who else is going to fill the position? We don't. There, There's one... Uh, there's one uh, minister in parliament. Is uh, I think she's Armenian, Paula Yakubian, who's like a non. He's, she's an independent uh, candidate, who's not affiliated with any sect. Uh, I don't know what is the name of the party, but it's it's known to be a non-sectarian platform that's based on like just civic responsibility and serving the people. But I just see this big vacuum that has to be filled by politicians that actually have experience in uh, public service. Because most of the politicians that work in this country, they, they do it in, not that just didn't study political science or anything in the social science or liberal arts, they're all either businessmen or engineers who made their money abroad, come from rich, powerful families that just sit there because of their name. Not all of them. I mean, some of them just got rich on their own, and then they went in. But still, it's it's just they're all they're all businessmen. They care about making money and 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 then branding Lebanon as like this Paris of the Middle East, which it's not anymore. And they are really destroyed every public. Re they have they're they're building beaches, private beaches, and hotels and resorts in place of public public beaches and property. There's no public, there's no parks in this country. You want to go sit down in a place to read, you have to go to the coffee shop and buy an expensive coffee just so you can sit down. There's nowhere to sit down. So like one park in the whole country where like you can sit down and do whatever you want, but it's, it's just really small compared to the whole city. It is just not a way to live and it's not a way to treat your own people. I just don't want to rant, but it just, I don't see positive direction of where this could go all I can see is just a lot of angry people I want to say 80% of the Lebanese population or more I don't know I mean that that have had too much and f finally have an outlet to confront their politicians without being afraid of, of the consequences because usually there's just this big tension and lack of trust between the different sects I mean I don't know I am assuming like anybody who's not familiar with Lebanon, I mean, there's officially over 18 or 18 uh, different sects, uh, most of the majority being uh, Christians, divided most are mostly Maronite, but also Orthodox and other sects, and the other majority being Muslims, mostly Sunni and Shia, and uh, another sect that is not technically Muslim, but they're, they're, they're called Druze, and they're their own thing. And all these different sects have competed for political power and, and the whole government is, 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 is like supposed to be divided in such a way to resent all these sects, but in reality, it's just mostly the elite, the political elite, the rich people that have everything versus the middle class, which is almost non-existent now, and, and the poor. And they've gotten away with this for decades since the Civil War because they keep playing the sectarian card. I mean, there's this thing called the race card in the US. I'm sure you guys know what that is, right? They play the sectarian card. They make every issue sectarian so they could divert attention away from the corruption so they could uh, not have to do anything. I mean, 
what was the last thing the government did for this country? I don't know. Look, I, I just don't want to complain. I just don't know what to say. I I don't give a shit, but I hope things get better. I don't think they will. Not because I'm a pessimist, not because I'm depressed, but I don't see an alternative for the people that have been there for the past three years. And that any slant of improvement will mean several years of transition, more instability, more uncertainty, and um, more years of dealing with problems of like economic debt, the high unemployment, and uh, all these other problems. I just think only hope there is is maybe to stop being afraid of politicians because they've been there for several decades and because they have all this power and all the other, all these goons and to build a kind of network or kind of like uh, to trust the people of different sects so that we can, I don't know, we can build like a dialogue with each other because I think it's the only way we could build a better future. I mean, there are competent, hardworking Lebanese people. It's just that they always immigrate because they just, most of them immigrate and they just were left with, I'm sorry to say, like the, the, the idiots that just don't know how to think. They don't work. They just rely on like family and the a rich, powerful cousin, some politician that they vote for. Like, I don't know, we need, Lebanese people need to, A, you know, be responsible and accountable for themselves. B, need to stop being paranoid about the other another sect getting power. Like, I used to hate, and I still kind of hate, I guess, the Shia, because they have all the power now, but, like, they were oppressed in the 50s, and they've been the minority for a long time, and now they're kind of... They're not really the majority, but they're politically the majority and they have all the power because Hezbollah has a monop monopoly of violence, not the Lebanese forces or not the Lebanese army. Yeah, I hope I don't get into trouble with this, be but it's the truth. Um, it doesn't mean I hate them. I just don't like the fact that someone I don't vote for has a monopoly of violence, you know, and they didn't get there democratically. And they have links with Iran, which I don't like because undermines Lebanon's autonomy. But that's just a whole other subject. All right, I'm aware that this is a big rant and that probably don't make a lot of sense what I'm saying here. But this is just what I wanted to say. Like, I really dislike a lot of things about this country, but I hope for a better future for for the people that are still living here and for people who are going to stay. Uh, for many years to come because you know for all its faults there's still a lot of good things to love about this country it's just just difficult to live here without a stable future and, and all these interventions from countries i i, I really want to leave but and 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 I've, i have my own reasons for taking my time and not leaving yet like I'm a, I have my own problems. Like, yeah, it's not. I want to make this a vlog thing, but I hope that the protesters, the protesters that I've been, you know, demonstrating for the past week, will take this as an opportunity to build on something to make this country livable, to to keep its 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 people, and um, hopefully turn this into like a. A real hub it, it, it really is a beautiful country um, and not just because of the weather and the food and, and the geography it's just so much potential and it's just been ruined and destroyed by greedy corrupt old men who want who, who are just using fear tactics to, to, to get everything from their people and I just wish this protest it just kills that fear.
Yeah, that's all I have to say. I, I just hope I've been clear, but I, I'm really frustrated because I've been stuck at home for five days because I'm too much of a pussy to go down protest. protest but that's all I have to say for now. Bye, guys. I'll have a book review next time. Take care. For those of you protesting, stay safe. And yeah, exercise your democratic rights responsibly. And uh, yeah.